Uh, the testing here within the Sepang, Valentina Rossi, possibly as well, uh, might just be uh, heading out just to do a, a few practice starts. Alicia Spargo uh, is uh, still out on track, uh, but again, I think he'll be coming straight back down the pit lane uh, and carry out uh, yet another practice start. He was due, of course, to do a full race simulation on the Aprilia, as were so many uh, of the riders uh, in the field. But as we heard from uh, Hector Barbara a little bit earlier on and Jonas Volga, they were both saying that uh, despite it being a very, very short range shower, it was uh, heavy enough uh, to soak uh, 13 corners uh, of this uh, Sepang circuit. So let's keep a close eye on that uh, Valentina Rossi then, uh, the 37-year-old uh, heading back out to the track. Is this just for uh, a routine uh, practice start run or is he going out to uh, check the condition to see if he can uh, get in uh, any meaningful test return at the end of October for that? Probably very important and ultimate round of the World Championship. Yeah, and if that doesn't work, then you heard it straight from the horse's mouth. Horace Caparossi saying that there's certain the track. Well, they tried it with Jack Miller, not quite worked on, or, on both times. Perhaps we got a man that really could start walking in the footsteps and was uh, plastered up. Uh, yeah, there's, a, there's a, a lot more to this game than uh, people realise. And another thing that interested me was that Scott Running piece was uh, any. Any slight change, if the club's a little bit bulky or the, the, they feel a bit of plaster on their hands or anything, just upsets that concentration a little bit. Yeah, it does. It's uh, the physical fitness of a rider. And you just can't underestimate uh, how fit these guys are. But, you know, some of these guys haven't been out on circuit since November, so a bit of arm pump is not really a massive surprise when you think about the amount of laps that some of these guys have actually put in. Here's some footage of uh, the doctor himself, Valentino Rossi, hanging right off the bike there as he makes his way uh, around that looks like the quick turn five is, is and then uh, around. He, he's obviously just been out on circuit a moment ago. I heard Matt mention about his lap times, which obviously gives us some idea as to what the track conditions were like. Well, his final lap before he went into pit lane was a two minute point nine. So, What's that only one and a half seconds off the fastest time we've seen so far this week? It does suggest to me his chances, and often they have been ruined by the injury, which is a very, very sad indeed. Uh, he's been there or thereabouts. He's certainly led the World Championship on a number of occasions. Uh, you do feel that it's ironic we were talking to Davide Brivio at the time, the first Suzuki team manager. Uh, he obviously jumped back on the bike and just continued because he didn't even come in. It makes it more difficult when you have problems because he can't be on track. Rob, the minute Ivan test, will he have two points? Yeah, we will let him. Start for the Aspar team uh, with uh, Batista going so well, uh, and of course, uh, Carol Abraham back in the motor cheap paddock doing a good job. Here's Valentino Rossi. I think you uh, need any illustration about the heat and humidity and the effort put in. Just look at his face before he toweled it down. Big effort from the 37 year old. It really has paid off for that 159.589 from Valentino Rossi with his teammate. Fabric Vignal is leading the way. This has been a very good three days for the official factory Yamaha team. Uh, the changes they brought to the bike seem to be paying off. The two riders are gelling and uh, I would think they will sleep tight tonight before they start planning their trip to Australia. Well, Paolo Giabatti said yesterday, and it was a, a good moment, it doesn't matter who's fastest in this test, what matters is who's fastest under the two. He's had to learn, hasn't he? And he seems to have learned very quickly. He can't run him in a GP. Do. There were some standout performers. We've already mentioned Alvaro Bautista, but if you look a little bit further down the, the time screens, you just watch some footage here of Valentino Rossi, the likes of Alicia Spargaro. Pretty soon. Uh, not exactly the biggest surprise in the world there to see that uh, Andrea Iannone was towing uh, Hector Barbara <laughs> down as they come downhill initially around turn three then uphill to turn four and then it's that left hand uh, with a rather awkward camper change actually midway round which we haven't seen the crash but he's perfectly okay Valentino Rossi exits pit lane he's already close to the fast time at 59.589 is he perhaps going out there for uh, a little bit of a run or will he try and attack his teammate is the war between Maverick Vinales and Valentino Rossi he's obviously on it and just a moment ago, Valentino Rossi completed 61 laps. Uh, he's 
moved into the 159s and I think it is the wheeling and at some point during the first test of the year I'm sure that's what this crew are all waiting for yeah Show claps his hands and shakes his fist. Valentino Rossi goes to the line. You do get the feeling that is the end of the three days for Valentino Rossi. 61 laps he's completed today. Four fastest. I think he'd be absolutely delighted. The day's well, Lorenzo found himself up the timing of the sheets, but uh, that wasn't his most important job. It was to adjust that riding style. He's done exactly that using the rear brake of the Ducati. Corner entry is what he found difficult, the difference for him, riding the Ducati and the MR. He's done a good job, isn't he? Yeah, he really has. Valentino Rossi then back in the pits. So uh, it does look like uh, his uh, day has been concluded, if it has. Well, the best he can hope for is fourth place. That 159.589, as Nick said. Johan Zarco, he, he did improve uh, a couple of laps ago. He climbed up to eighth place. Uh, 159.772 uh, for Zarco. There's uh, Rossi. He went out for a, a nine lap run there. It's the 12th exit of the day. Yeah, a few, uh, well, a couple of two zero zeros very early on. And that 219 on his last lap was because he spent the entirety of the start finish straight on the back, back wheel. wheel. Uh, Alvaro Batista still out there. Valentino Rossi has come in. Mark Marquez, we keep an eye on. Uh, we look at the clock and there's 35 minutes to go. So, Mary Vinales may certainly get on the plane home to Spain uh, before having to fly out to Australia. A 159.368 could be the fastest lap of the test so far. Have a look at Valentino Rossi. The new frame, the new aerodynamics on the Yamaha. And he comes in pretty good nick, does Valentino Rossi, after three tough days with that migraine. Had to stay in the hotel in the darkened room for a good hour before he could come for the first morning of the test. Fully recovered from that. And a big, big effort from the nine times world champion. Got a new teammate who was absolutely flying. He's got an old teammate who's uh, made the switch to Ducati. It's a, a juicy prospect ahead, isn't it? Yeah, you got a headache here on Monday. The test has got a headache on the other side of that factory Yamaha garage in the shape of uh, Maverick Vinyal. There's a tough work out there for Valentino Ross, the best. So there's been some really eye catching performances from several riders uh, in this test. And on more so than uh, Johan Zarco. He looks like he could be uh, a potential top 10 threat right from the get go. It's been a, a really good day, a really good test for the rookies. Zarco. Folger, Sam Lowe's, uh, Rins in particular, who came in, uh, not said lacking confidence, but uh, really didn't get a good run at Valencia before he had the big crash. The Yamaha garage door comes down, certainly that's on. Uh, very different character, no no hard raking, very fast corners that you will maybe come with the two different chassis for each ride is the, the normal style fairing, the other style fairing, or, or do you really think that after today you might say, no, we know exactly which bike we want? again uh, most of the items but uh, as you said Filipina is uh, testing with Yamaha he has led every single one of them so check your flag out three mixed days of weather but I've got to say I think today we've escaped pretty lightly well, Maverick Vignal is uh, unbeaten so far in winter testing. Top of the bar, 159.368. Ahead of Andre, you know, no improvement from the Italian today. Marquez third, Vizio so forth. Danny Pedrosa a late charge up into fifth. Valentino Rossi wasn't part of that late time attack. He was there in sixth place. A great Aspar Ducati run for Alvaro Batista in seventh place. Jorge Lorenzo completing the top ten on the fact of Ducati. So we have a look at Johan Zarco, Alex Rins. What a performance by both of those MotoGP rookies. A crash for Alicia Spargo. Dan Elwitrich has had a wretched old time with mechanical problems. Great performance by Jonas Folger. Hector Barbara, a four for him. Very late in the session. Carol Abraham up there in 18th place. Claiming a few decent scalps there. Abraham, Scott Rudding, Lawrence Bass, Paul Spargo. Bradley Smith behind him, of course. Paul Spargo and Bradley Smith getting in crucial development miles on that new KTM RC16. Sam Lowe's there in 23rd place. Yeah, Sudan Zerni and poor old Tito Rabat on the plane home to Barcelona after a big crash yesterday. Done a lot of damage to his knee.